Genesis 1:26. 创世纪章二十六节。Then God said, "Let us make man in our image." 神说，让我们照我们的形象造人。The word "make" also means to create. 这个造就是创造的造。Create in Chinese is the word "zao." 中文的造就是这个创造的造字。Now notice how you write this word. 注意到这个字怎么写啊 ？All right, this word is written this way. 这个字的写法是这样子。There was speaking words. 首先有说话的告。And as words was spoken, movement happens. 当这宣告说出，就有行动产生了。So 走字旁 over words. 所以在这个告旁边是一个走字边。And isn't it true when God spoke the word, living thing began to move? 不是这样吗？神一说话就开始活物出来了。So right from the word create, you know that the creation story was recorded there. 从第一个创造的造字，你就看见创造的故事在里面。And look at verse twenty-two. 你看二十二节这里。And God blessed them and saying, "Be fruitful and multiply." 神就赐福给他们，让他们生养众多。Now we all Chinese, we love this word bless. 所有华人都很爱这个字“福”。Chinese New Year, we see this everywhere. 农历年到处都看到这个字儿。How do you write 福？福这个字怎么写的 ？Now watch, it is 神字旁 ，it is God. 你看到旁边这个“世”字旁是神的意思。Together at one with a mouth. 有一口代表一个人的单位。So God together with a soul, one mouth. 代表神跟一个人、一个灵魂在一起。In the garden. 在田园里。So that is prosperity. 这叫福分呢、啊。Prosperity to ancient Chinese is not just material wealth and money. 对古代华人来说，福分不光是金钱物质而已。But it's for God and man to have a one relationship in a fruitful garden, in your fruitful family, or in your workplace. Hallelujah. Is it says in verse fifteen, then the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. 十五节，耶和华神将那人安置在伊甸园，使他修理看守。Now, how do you write the word "garden" in Chinese? 中文“园”这个字怎么写呢 ？Look at the screen. Is this word "园"? Everybody say "园." 园。Now notice. Watch everybody. 每个人仔细看啊。God took clay to. 神拿了尘土起来。He breathed with his mouth. 用口吹气进去。On two people, one is a man. Right? 两个人身上，一个是一个人呢、啊，男人。Out of his sight came forth a woman. 从他身旁出来了女人。And put them in a garden. 把他们放在这个范围里。That's how you got the word garden. 这就是园啦。Genesis two verse sixteen. 在二章十六节这里。And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, "Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die." 耶华神吩咐他说：“园中各样树上的果子你可以随意吃，只是分别善恶树上的果子你不可吃，因为你吃的日子必定死。” So God stopped them. 神拦阻他们。Prohibited them. 禁止他们。Now to pro to forbid in Chinese is this word 禁。在中文里面讲禁止的禁字。Now how do you write the word 禁 ？Now look. God gave them. God put them in a garden. You have trees. He gave them a revelation, 启示，还把启示告诉他们这个世界是。God gave them revelation about the tree. 神给他们这树木的启示。Don't you eat it? 不要吃哦。If you eat it, you will die. 你吃的话必定死。Why were there two trees? 为什么放两棵树呢 ？Because there was a tree of life and a tree of knowledge of good and evil. 因为有生命之树，还有分别善恶之树。All right, now, well. Genesis chapter three, verse one. Now, 现在到第三章第一节这里了。Here came the problem. 这里有问题了。Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had 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 made. 耶和华神所造的，唯有蛇比天也一切的活物更狡猾。So the devil came to tempt the woman. 魔鬼来试探女人了。Now, what is the word tempter in Chinese? The person who gives temptation. 中文试探诱惑人、让人入魔的那个“魔”字怎么写 ？Is this word? Look. 你看呢 ？Everybody say 魔。魔。Now, how do you write the word 魔？魔这个字怎么写呢 ？All right. There was a garden. 这边有个园子。And then there was a movement. 哇，有一个行动一撇在那儿。One guy came to man, 
儿，他来找人了，那个是儿子。Secretly， 私下的。This is the word. 私。私 means secret. 这个私就是秘密的意思。So this word 鬼 means devil. 这个就是魔鬼那个鬼子了。Also, it means suspicious. 鬼鬼祟祟。中文也讲鬼鬼祟祟的。He came in. 他进来。Slow movement. 慢动作 Where did he come? 他到哪儿去 He came to the tree, among the trees. 他是在树林当中来的 Undercover. 在林荫之下 He came as a tempter. 他来引诱人了 How do you write the word to last or to 贪婪的婪这个贪婪的婪字怎么写的呢 Notice is again those three over a woman. 注意到这两棵树在这个女人之上哦 Because the woman fell into sin first. Because the first time she fell into sin, she fell into sin. All right, now temptation is always tough. Temptation is always very difficult. So what is the Chinese word for difficulty, or worry, or stress? So when the Chinese word for difficulty or worry is stress, how do you write it? Isn't it this word, "mu" over a boundary? Is it putting a "mu" in this boundary? You don't touch this tree. Don't touch this tree. Oh, very difficult and simple. Very difficult. I want. I want. Well, sin. Eve fell into sin, and then Adam too. Eve, Adam, they fell into sin. And the result of the temptation was sin or sin. The result of the temptation was sin or sin. Now, the ancient form of sin. I'm going to write for you the ancient form. You want to know the ancient form of sin? It's like this. All right, I'm. And now I'm an expert in ancient Chinese. I'm now an expert in ancient Chinese. Okay. Looks like old Chinese. Now, this one, sin, this is zui, the ancient form. This is Chinese old zui. It's actually a man run with his nose. It's the nose of a man. Actually, this nose is the nose of a man. It's the nose of a man. And he feels very bitter, very sinful. And the bottom is a very sinful heart. So this was the original meaning of the word "joy." This is the original meaning. But when Qin Shi Huang came along, he united China in 221 BC. But when Qin Shi Huang came along, he united China in 221 BC. But when Qin Shi Huang came along, he united China in 221 BC. But when Qin Shi Huang came along, he united China in 221 BC. But when Qin Shi Huang came along, he united China in 221 BC. But when Qin Shi Huang came along, he united China in 221 BC. But when Qin Shi Huang came along, he united China in 221 BC. But when Qin Shi Huang came along, he united China in 221 BC. But when Qin Shi Huang came along, he united China in 221 BC. Against. He put this word "for" in front of the word "for." You see, this is the word "for," and this is the word "against." So you can see that there are four words. The top is "for." Now, Qin Shi Huang was not a Christian. Qin Shi Huang was not a Christian. But by the way, not every emperor was a non-believer. There were many emperors who were believers of God. But you have to be honest. Not every king was a believer of Jesus. Some kings were not believers of Jesus. Because do you know there were four contradictions here in Genesis chapter three? Because in the Genesis three, there are four contradictions. Look at verse one. Look at verse one. Look at verse one. The devil says, "Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden?" The devil says, "God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden." Now this is not true. It was against the word of God. This is against the word of God. Because God said you cannot eat of only one tree. God said you cannot eat of only one tree. You can eat every tree except one. All the trees can eat, but this one cannot. First contradiction. This is the first contradiction. Second contradiction, verse two. The second contradiction is in the second verse. Now Eve got sucked in. Now Eve got sucked in. Now Eve got sucked in. She said, "God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die." Again, not true. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them to touch it, just don't eat it. God allowed them Fourth contradiction, verse five. 而第四个四十而非第五节 For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. 因为神知道你们吃的日子眼睛明亮，便如神一样了 So the devil was trying to tell Eve, well, God is not wanting you to be so powerful like Him, so He's stopping you from eating. That's the fourth contradiction. 魔鬼告诉夏娃是神不希望你跟他一样有能力，所以他们不让你吃。这是第四个四十而非了 So the first time this word 罪 came out. 
第一次有这个罪的形状出来的时候。It was depicting Genesis chapter three of the four contradictions that led to the first sin. 哇，这就描绘出创世第三章那四个带出人罪恶的似是而非。Oh, come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Look at verse seven right now. 你看到第七节。And the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew they were naked. 他们两人眼睛就明亮，知道自己赤身露体。Now, how do you write the word naked? 这个赤裸的裸怎么写 ？Look at the screen now. 你看到荧幕上的。Notice it got to do with now. Watch it got to do with your clothing. 一字旁。注意到跟你穿的衣服有关呢。Your covering is gone when you eat of the 果子 the food. 当你吃那个果子，这个衣服就不见了。So the first time naked came in, it got to do with. Covering gone because of a fruit, Genesis. 第一次感到赤裸，就创世纪里面讲的，你吃了果子就开始遮蔽自己。Now look at verse eight. 你看第八节。And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God from the trees of the garden. 天起了凉风，耶和华神在园中行走，那人和他妻子听见神的声音，就藏在园里的树木中躲避耶和华神的面。Now Adam went into hiding. 亚当去躲起来了。How do you write this word "hide"? 躲这个字怎么写的呢 ？Now, his body, 身体，他的身子，奶 ，is 奶 ，superimposed to the tree. 藏在木头后头了。So his body is the tree. 他的身子就好像树木一样。In other words, you can't see him. He's hiding behind the tree. 换句话说，躲在树木后头，你看不到他了。Man wasn't hiding. Why? He felt the guilt and shame of sin. 人躲起来为什么？因为他感受到罪的那个羞愧。How do you write guilt? 这个愧字怎么写呢 ？Well, look at the screen. 你看荧幕上头。Look, it is it got to do with heart. 心字旁。Your heart. 跟你的心有关嘛，所以心字旁。And the devil got into your heart. 哈，鬼进到心里去了。你心里有鬼啊？有鬼啦。Now, what happened? 怎么回事 ？The devil got into foothold of man's life. 魔鬼在人的生命中站了脚步了。Well, with, with with the fall of man, sin becomes a part of human nature. So by the time we come to Genesis chapter four, the first crime ever committed was recorded. 到创世纪第四章就记载下人类的第一次犯罪 It has to do with two brothers. 这跟两兄弟有关呢 Who are the two, two brothers? Cain and Abel. 哪两兄弟就是该隐跟亚伯 So what happened? Well, Cain killed Abel. This brother, as brother, killed Cain. All right. So, brothers became brothers. The brother became murderer. Right. So, his 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 brother became murderer. Cain pled for mercy. Cain pled for mercy. God, please, 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 God, And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Yahweh gave Cain a mark on Cain, lest anyone Creation was recorded in their writings. So, in ancient times, all the creation stories are recorded in our writings. Now we come to the flood in Genesis chapter seven. Come to Genesis chapter seven, we see the flood. Look at Genesis chapter seven, verse seven. You see the seven verse seven here. So Noah with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Noah and his seven sons and his wives went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. What is the word? For a big boat, Chinese to write "boat" this word, how do you write it? Boat. Everybody say "boat." Boat. Right. Have you? How many of you have written this 
as a Chinese in primary school, put up your hands. 有多少人小学学过这个传字的, you see, you're writing this, but you're writing Genesis story and you don't even know. 哇, 你每次在写创世纪的故事, How do you write Chuan? Look, look. 船这个字怎么写的,你看啊? A tow, a boat. 啊, 这就是一艘船, With eight people, 八. 里面有八口人. You say, why eight people in the boat? 诶, 怎么船上有八个人啊? Because chapter 7 and verse 7 says, Noah and his wife, two people. 在创世纪七章七节说，挪亚跟他太太两个人啦。Three sons, that makes it five. 三个儿子, and three daughter-in-laws, that's eight. 再加三个媳妇多少？八个人。The the first time boat was used, eight people was it were inside. 第一次用船的时候，里头就是八个人的。Recorded in Chinese history. 华人的文字里面就记下来了。Look at Genesis eleven and verse one. 十一章一节这里说。Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. 那是天下人的口音言语都是一样。Alright, and verse 4, they say, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. 第四节他们说,来吧,我们要建造一座城和一座塔,塔顶通天,为要传扬我们的名,免得我们分散在全地上。Now, how do you write the word tower in Chinese? 而中文的这个塔字是怎么写的呢? It's the word ta, everybody say ta. Ta. Right, now, notice how you write it. All the people, 人, 首先全部都是人, speaking one, 还一, mouth or one language. 口同声的, people have one speech. This is the Chinese word. Huh, huh? So when we have one vision, one, one, one language, we speak one, one, one word, we are united together. 当我们有同样的意向, 当我们说同样的语言, but here they were united for something evil. 可是这里的合一是为邪恶的事情. They were taking grass, 草字头, 拿了草出来, 所以有草字头, and clay, 土字边, 加上土字边的土一起, and they formed the word ta. So the first time tower is used in Chinese history, it got to do with people in unity together building something. 而人第一次使用塔这个字, now, look at verse 9. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. Now, what did you say in Chinese? 中文怎么说的? 变乱. 变乱. Confusion or Luan, how do you write it? It got to do with your tongue. 这跟你的舌头有关啊? This is the word 舌头 or tongue. And because of tongue, now this word, this character, it is the right leg. It's your right leg. 这个边旁呢, it speaks of the right leg scattering in one direction. 代表是从一个方向, 用这个右腿把它快, Confusion. 混乱. Because of the words, the people were scattering. Because the language was being mixed up. Now, the Chinese word for scattering is the word 分上. 中文讲到分散这两个字。分上. 你看到分散这两个字。The pronunciation is not so good. <laughs> I got to learn from Lulu. How do you write the word 分上? 分散这两个字要怎么写呢? Can you see here? Can you see here? 下面看得到吗? Everybody turn your neighbor and say, look, look at pastor. Come on. 跟旁边也说要看着牧师啊? Okay. All right. It is the word 八 and the word 刀, a knife. 这个分字上头是一个八字，下头是一把刀。Why is that eight? 为什么写个八呢? Because there were eight generations leading to the Tower of Babel. 因为从八个世代才数到巴别塔这里来。And they were all divided by the knife, so there was division. 因此又把刀把他们分开来，他们分隔出去。Now 分上上，how you say? is not so good. <laughs> 分上。Now look. Fensang is all the people. This is where you get the word gong. Right? Yeah, and this is flesh. And this word, Lulu, help me. 这个是扑字旁, 扑字旁, that means followed. So look, put them all together. Generations were divided, and all the flesh followed. 这世代被分隔, 
So because of the Tower of Babel, 因为有巴别塔 all the people were scattered. 所有人被赶散出去 And one major group went in towards the east and settled in the land of China. 很重要的一组人往东边去，到了中国安定下来。So they migrated. 因此他们迁移过去了。Okay, the word migrated or scattered is this word. Look. 而中文迁移的这个迁字，你看到了。Now, very interesting. 很有意思啊。Okay, this is the last space I have. Okay, so everybody look at this last space. 每个人看到最后一个洞了啊。All right. Now, how do you write this word 迁？这个迁字要怎么写呢 ？It was a big migration. 大。这是一个很大的迁移，所以有个大字。大 ，and this word， 四，这个四字 ，which means division。这个字是分散的意思。So there was a big division。一个很大的分散。Where did it happen from？ 从哪儿发生的呢 ？From the west。是在西边发生的。So Babel to the Chinese race is known as the west。对华人来说，巴别塔是在西边的事情。How you write sacrifice？ 这个牺牲的牺字怎么写 ？Sacrifice。你看这个字啊。You say, ah,、oh, pastor, very hard. 牧师，这个字很难呢。Okay, let me see. <笑> well, what did God do? The book of Hebrews tells us. 神是怎么做的？希伯来书告诉我们。Leviticus tells us. 利未记也说了。God says, take the cow. 神说，把你们牛带来。Take the lamb. 把你们的羊带来。But it got to be Without blemish, 可是是最美没有残疾的。秀， perfect， 是完美的。Kill them with a spear, 哥。用刀割把它给杀了。Offer as a sacrifice， 把它献上为祭。Can you see the whole concept of the blood sacrifice is already in this one word？ 你看见一个字里面把整个献祭的概念放在里头了。Especially use the sacrifice of a baby lamb. 特别要献上是羊羔的祭。So how you write a a 羊羔 or 羔羊？这个羔字怎么写呢 ？You take a lamb, put it through fire. 你把羊火字边放在火上头。So the concept is take a lamb, sacrifice it, burn it. 所以概念就是把羊带来，牺牲它，烧了它。Then what do you do? Take the blood. 你还要做什么？你还要盛他的血。Do you know the original Chinese word for blood is this picture of a vessel with a drop of blood inside? 你知道中国古字的血字是长这个样，一个器皿里头一个点。This is the vessel of a cup, a Chinese cup with blood inside. 这是一个中国杯子的形状，里面放的是血。But then it was changed. 可是后来改了这个字呢 ？It was changed to this word, 血。慢慢演化成今天我们所写这个写字。Now how do you write 血？这个血怎么写的？血 is actually now watch, it is blood, a dash of blood, in a vessel. Mean, this the word, this vessel. 你把一滴血放在器皿的皿里头。And you know this, he came to give us righteousness. 他来是要赐公义给我们。And righteousness is this word, lamb over me. 而义这个字就是羊在我之上 ，lamb， 羊 over me， 在我之上。So not this sacrifice always got to do with lamb。注意到牺牲一直跟羊有关呢。This word thousands of years old。这个字已经几千年的历史了。Longer before Jesus even came。早在耶稣第一次降临之前就有了。How do you write this word？ 这个字怎么写的 ？Originally you take a lamb。一开头你拿一只羊来。And you use your hand, 手这边。用你的手。You take a spear and pierce him. 拿把刀戳进去。A spear. 一把刀割戳进去的。So the Chinese already prophesied. 中文已经预言了。God will bring His lamb. 神要赐下他的羊。And people will take a spear and with their hands pierce him. And you know that happened on Calvary. 而人要拿着刀割戳进他的落旁，这就在十字架上发生了。But in Singapore, we write in this simplified format. 可是中新加坡我们写的中文是简体字的中文。But notice, even this word is fantastic. 即使这个简体字都很漂亮啊。It means the blood. 代表有一滴血。On the cross. 躺在十字架上。The blood on the cross. 十字架上的血。It could mean the blood in the vessel before God. 
他可能是在神面前器皿里的血。But also mean the blood ultimately they'll be splattered, splattered on the cross of Calvary. 可是也代表最终在各个他尸架上流出的血。John 3:16 say, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life or eternal life. 在约翰福音三章十六节说，凡信他的不至灭亡，反得永生。The word eternal life or yong in the ancient writing is this. Yong 字的古字是长这样的 It says it means when the lamb comes, he will wash you like water, all your sins away. 这羊来能够像水一样洗净你所有的罪 Today we use this word yong, which also means the same thing. 今天我们的字变成这个永字，也是同样的意思 When the blood comes, he will wash you like water. And all your sins will be washed as white as snow. Hallelujah. 当这血流出来，它像水一样洗净你一切污秽的罪。Hallelujah. So Romans 10 verse 8 says. 罗马书第第十章第八节说。With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 人口里承认就必得救。So what is faith? 信是什么 ？Faith is when a man. 是当一个人。Uses his mouth to confess. 使用他的嘴说出这个话。And the confession. Will bring to faith that will lead to grace that lead to salvation. 而且说的话带出信心，带出得救的救恩。Matthew two verses one and two. 马太福音第二章一到二节。Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. 当西律王的时候，耶稣生在犹太的伯利恒，有几个博士从东方来到耶路撒冷。Saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? 说那生下来做犹太人之王的在哪里 ？We have seen his star in the east, have come to worship him. 我们在东方看见他的星，特来拜他。Now, Bible scholars time this to be around five to four BC. 圣经学者将这样的时间放在大概公元前四到五年。Now, many people say this is just a fable. 很多人说，哎呀，这只个神话。How can you follow a star? 你怎么跟着星走啊 ？Now, what's interesting is this. 可是很有意思的是 ，From ancient Chinese records， 在古代中国的记载里 ，we know that the astronomers in China saw the same star. 我们知道中国的这些天文学家看到同样的一颗星哦。You see, every night there there were fourteen imperial astronomers observing the night sky. Because every night, 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 every 二年二月，彗星出，千牛七十余日，传谕：千牛日月，五星所从其，礼数之源，三正之始，彗而出之，更精之象也。其出九者，为其师大也。Now listen to the English translation. 你听听它字面的解释是 ：In the second month of the second year of Tianping, the comet was out of Altair for more than seventy days. 在建平第二年二月，有着彗星从牵牛星而出，超过七十多天。It is said comets appear to signify the old being replaced by the new. 在这里，它是要写明新的要取代旧的。Altair, the sun and the moon and the five stars are in movement to signify the beginning of a new epoch. 而这日月星辰五星的运作，要写明新的年代开始。The beginning of a new year, a new month, and a new day. 新的年份、新的月份、新的日子的开始。The appearance of this comet undoubtedly symbolizes change. 这彗星的出现，象征的就是改变。The extended appearance of this comet indicates that this is of great importance. 而这彗星出现的长短，象征这是非常重要的事情。Now let's understand what this. Whole、uh, historical document is all about. Let us understand the whole history that we have just told us about. Tianping was the name given to the emperor of China during that time. Tianping is the name given to the emperor of China during that time. Tianping is the name given to the emperor of China during that time. 因此，这个彗星的记载，你可以找出是在什么样的年份里。Now the Chinese didn't know the truth of Jesus' birth in the West. 华人的时候不晓得在西方耶稣基督诞生的事情。But somehow they were convinced this event is of great importance. 然而他们确定的是，这是非常非常重要的事件。And it was in the second month of the second year. That means from March the ninth 
to April the sixth, five BC. 这是在二年二月，大概是公元前第五年，三月九号到四月六号之间。Pretty much coincide with what Bible scholars say about Jesus' birth. 哎，这就非常符合学者们讲到耶稣诞生的日期。And it says for seventy days they saw this comet. 他们有七十天都可以看到这个彗星。Seventy days was the time needed for the wise men to travel from the Near East to Jerusalem. 这些博士要从近东地区来到耶路撒冷，就需要七十天的路程。People say, how could you follow a star? 人家说你怎么可能跟着星星啊 ？It was a comet. 因为是彗星。All right, so they did follow a star. 他们真的是跟着星星来的。Now this comet was seen around Altair. In Chinese, is the is the word 天牛。这颗彗星是靠近牛郎星，也是所谓的牵牛星。It is one of the fifteen brightest stars in the night sky in China. 是在中国夜空当中看到第十五亮的星星。From the constellation of Aquila. 是靠近水瓶星群的。Now, according to the classic historical records. 而照着史记上面所记载的，他说：“正义牵牛为牺牲，以为官粮。” That means the primary meaning of Altair, the key supporting pillar of the heavens, is the perfect sacrifice. He says, "Cow is the key to support the heavens. Its real meaning is to become a perfect sacrifice." So the Chinese believe heaven was trying to give a message. The Chinese believe heaven was trying to give a message. Look at the comet coming out a perfect sacrifice. Look at the comet coming out a perfect sacrifice. Look at the comet coming out a perfect sacrifice. Look at the comet coming out a perfect sacrifice. Look at the comet coming out a perfect sacrifice. Look at the comet coming out a perfect sacrifice. Look at the comet coming out a perfect sacrifice. Look at the comet coming out a perfect sacrifice. Look at the comet coming out a perfect sacrifice. Look at the comet coming out a perfect sacrifice. Look at the comet coming out a perfect sacrifice. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict read that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a message. Summer, fourth month of the year, on the day of Renwu, the imperial edict reads that the Chinese believe that heaven was trying to give a
the most disciplined, the most on fire group of people are the Jesuits. 在所有天主教徒当中，那些最火热、虔诚、为神摆上的，就是耶稣会的。In 1583, Ricky and his friend became missionaries to China. 一五八三年，利玛窦跟他的朋友到中国来宣教。Settling in Guangdong Province, they studied Chinese, wore Chinese clothes, and make Chinese friends. 他们安顿在广东省那里，开始学习华文，穿中国人的衣服，交中国人的朋友。Matteo Ricci was a brilliant man. 利玛窦是个很聪明的人。He studied and mastered the Chinese classics, including the writings on Confucius and Mencius. 他学习之后，精通所有中国的经书，包括孔孟的学说在内。In a very short time, he became equal to the best scholars in China. 在很短时间之内，他的学问跟中国的学者毫不逊色。Now, Ricky taught Western science to the Chinese scholars. 而利玛窦把西方的科学交给中国的学者。He was the first man who introduced China to the world map. 他是第一个把世界地图带进中国的人。And for the first time, the Chinese people know where they were in the scheme of the world. 头一次，中国人知道自己在世界上是站在哪个角落。He taught them Western mathematics and astronomy. 同时，他也教他们西方的数学跟科学。As Ricky studied the classics, he realized the Chinese characters, the worship system, the blood sacrifice, that the Shang Di of the Chinese is the same God of the Bible. 他从所有中国的文字、所有献祭的仪式，跟他所有的礼仪当中，明白中国的上帝跟圣经的神完全一样。So what I shared with you last week and this week, basically. Matteo Ricci was the first man who discovered it. 我上个星期跟这个星期所分享的东西，基本上利玛都是第一个发现的人。Let me tell you what he wrote in Chinese, and mind you, this Italian man wrote in 文言文。我让你看看他在中文怎么写，是个意大利人哦，写的是文言文哦。So if you can't write Chinese, I do. I don't know what to say. 如果你中文都写不出来，都不知道该怎么说了。If an Italian man can write 文言文 ancient Chinese, 意大利人能够写文言文出来嘞。All right, let's say what. Let's let's read what he says. 看看利玛窦怎么说的。他说：“历观古书，而知上帝与天主特意以名。” That means having lived through a great number of ancient books, it is quite clear to me that the Sovereign on high and the Lord of heaven are different only in name. 他说：“当我看到所有中国的古书之后，很清楚的明白，他们所谓的上帝跟我们的天主只有姓名的差别而已。”Now he wrote a few pages away. 而之后呢，他又讲到无天主及华严上帝。He who is called the Lord of Heaven in my humble country is he who is called 上帝 in Chinese. 在我们国家所谓的天主就是华人所谓的上帝。So the missionary Ricky got very excited. 这位宣教士立马都很兴奋了。He began to show the Chinese the similarities. 他可以让华人看见这样的雷同性。And he translated many Christian books into Chinese. 也把很多基督教书籍翻译成华文。And translated the Chinese books into Latin for the Europeans. 也把华文翻成拉丁文，让欧洲人能读。So he was the first man that showed Europe the Chinese culture. 他是第一个让欧洲人看见华人文化的。Now, Ricky showed a great respect to the Chinese and their culture. 利玛窦非常尊重华人跟他们的文化。Now, listen to this. 仔细听好哦。To win them over, he sometimes dressed himself as a Buddhist monk or as a Confucian scholar. 为了赢得这些人，有时候利玛窦会穿上那些和尚的袍子，或是儒家学者的衣服。Now, the Jesuits are the most spiritual Catholics. 耶稣会是最属灵的天主教徒哎。But yet, Ricky was not religious at all. 但他完全不宗教化哦。His strategy was to engage the culture of the Chinese and win them to Christ through their genuine, through his genuine love and friendship. 他的策略是希望进入华人的文化当中，以自己真诚的友谊跟爱来为基督赢得这些人。Now stop for a moment and think about this. 哎，先停停想想看啊。He he identified with them. By even willing to dress as a Buddhist monk, he 认同这些人到一个地步，愿意穿的跟和尚一样。Think about this. 想想看哦。What happens if one Sunday morning you come to church? 如果有一个礼拜天早上你到教会来。Pastor Kong came dressed as a Buddhist monk and carry a Bible and preach. Kong 牧师穿着和尚的袈裟到台上拿着圣经讲道。Think about just imagine. 你想象一下吧。Here I am, not in my suit and tie. Wearing an orange saffron robe, 或而穿的是那个黄色的袈裟 Having beads around me, 哇，身上还大挂着佛珠 But carry a Bible and preach like a man on fire. 
，可是拿着圣经像火热的人一样教导。He got demonized. Oh, he got demonized. How can he come to church and dress as a Buddhist monk? He how can he come to church and dress as a Buddhist monk? But you see, Matthew Ricky, to him, holiness is not what you wear. 可是对利马窦来说，圣洁不在乎你穿什么。Doesn't matter if you dress like a Buddhist monk. 你穿的像不像和尚没有关系。Or you have a picture of Buddhist monk on your jeans. 还是你牛仔裤上面有一个和尚的图案。Makes no difference. 没差嘛。Yeah. Holiness is a matter of the heart. 圣洁是在乎你的内心。His goal is to gain a position in the royal palace and share the love of Christ to the Chinese emperor himself. 他的目标是也能够争取到一席之地，进到皇宫，有一天亲自跟皇帝分享基督的爱。Because you can't change a nation without changing the elite at the top. 因为你不能改变上流社会的精英分子，就不能改变社会。Change can only come top down. 改变是从上到下。They believe if they can change and convert the king of China, they will change the whole nation of China. 他相信，当皇帝悔改得救，整个中国就要得救了。After twenty years of hard work, 在他努力二十年之后 ，twenty years of faith, 信心的二十年 ，Ricky became an advisor to the Emperor Wang Li, and he was the first foreigner to become an advisor. 利玛窦成为万历皇帝的顾问，也是历史上面第一个西洋人的皇帝顾问。Here was a pastor. 这是一位牧师。A Jesuit priest, a missionary. 一个宣教士，耶稣会的修士。Became a mathematician. 而变成这样的一个数学家。A scientist to the Chinese. 对华人来说，科学家。And a political advisor to the king. 也成为皇帝的政治顾问。Just like Daniel in the Bible. 就像圣经的但以理。Just like Joseph in the Bible. 像圣经的约瑟。And today we have people in the church are so religious. 可是今天教会里面有很多宗教化的人。If the pastor enters the marketplace, they go crazy. 只要牧师敢跨进职场，他们就发疯了。Listen, if you think engaging the marketplace is wow so modern and so contemporary. 如果你觉得进入职场是这么现代化的想法 ，Five hundred years people have already done it. You're super behind time. 五百年前大家就做，你真的落伍久了。You're not just coming out of the twentieth century. 你现在不是从二十世纪出来。You are living in the sixteenth century. 你是活在十六世纪的。Time for you to get alive and get updated with the will of God. Hallelujah. 该好好清醒，让神的话语来更新你了。Oh, you want to clap? Give the Lord a big clap. 这是热烈的拍掌。Well, Matteo Ricci lived only 58 years. 利马窦只活了五十八岁。He died quite a young man. 满年轻就过世了。But in that time, Ricci led 2,500 Chinese to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 给他为耶稣基督赢得两千五百名华人。First man to bring the gospel to China. 第一个将把福音带进中国的人。Oh, give the Lord a big clap. 为主热烈的拍掌。He established four mission bases all throughout China. He in China established four mission bases. And through the love and friendship of his workers, the fellow Jesuit priests, and through his friendship, the Jesuit workers, their love and their friendship, one by one, among the Chinese elite, the top of society, the cream of society, they came to Christ. 当时华人社会最高级上流社会的人，这些皇宫贵族一个一个相信了耶稣。By 1664, there were More than a quarter million Christians in China now. 到一六六四年，中国已经超过二十五万的基督徒了。Many princes, empresses, dowagers became Christians and were water baptized. 很多都是皇家的王公贵族，成了基督徒，受了洗。Among those that got saved was the one of the greatest, if not the greatest, emperor in Chinese history. 而在得救的人当中，有一位是中国历史上最重最重要的一位君王之一。He was a Qin emperor by the name of Kangxi Huangdi. 就是清朝的康熙皇帝 ，and he began ruling at the age of fourteen. 他十四岁开始施掌皇权。Kangxi was tutored by another Jesuit missionary, a Christian, who was a brilliant scientist and mathematician. 而由另外一位耶稣会的宣教士，非常聪明的科学家南怀仁曾经教导过康熙。His name was Ferdinand Verbiest. 他的名字叫南怀仁。A missionary. 是一位宣教士。But a mathematician, a brilliant scientist. See a few things you need to learn over here. 在这里你需要学几个东西。The Bible says a man's gift and talent makes room for himself. 圣经告诉我们，人的恩赐才华能为他打开路。If you don't use your gift and talent, you're not going to go far in life. 
The Bible says the men of excellence will stand before kings. So if you live an average mediocre life, you are never going to influence the power that be. You got to excel in life. And all these Jesuit missionaries excel in life. They were educated, they were sophisticated. Non-religious and very progressive. Man, I'm preaching today. Kang Si was converted to Christ. And he wrote three, or he wrote thirty thousand poems. He wrote three thousand poems. One of the most educated emperors ever in history. In human history, he was a very educated emperor. He knew science, he knew mathematics, he was well versed in culture. He knew science, he knew mathematics, he was well versed in culture. Kang Xi's reign was known as the golden era of China. Kang Xi's reign was known as the golden era of China. Kang Xi's reign was known as the golden era of China. And he wrote wonderful poems to glorify God. I'm going to show you a, a picture of his actual handwriting, his calligraphy. How do you know this is written by him? His royal seal is, is imprinted over there. Now, we are not even going to try to read the whole thing. But I want to read to you the last few lines. That means heaven's gate was closed due to the first man's sin, the sin of Adam. The path to salvation is only through the Son. I'm willing to accept the Holy Son of God. And through Him, I receive eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First of all, long time ago, before idols came in, they already worshipped the same God of the Bible. And the greatest emperor in history of the Chinese people is a Christian himself. He wrote another poem. He his work was completed on the cross, and his blood shed like a creek. Such deep stream of grace flowed from the west. All right? Now, where was China relative to Israel? China is in the east, Israel is in the west. He says, the work of the cross is completed, and the grace of God is flowing to us Chinese people from the West. So excited was Emperor Kangxi of Christianity. Wow, Kangxi by 1692, he issued an edict granting Christians all throughout China to evangelize. That means it's not like, well, you know, if you want to, you can do it. He sent a royal edict. Let's Christianize China. Every Christian should preach and teach and convert people to Christ. Revival was spreading all throughout China. And then crisis hit. Now there were persecution. But that is not the greatest enemy. There were anti-Christians. But they were not the enemies. Where did the problem come from? Some leaders within the Catholic Church were against the missionaries engaging Chinese culture. The enemy of the work of the cross were the religious Christians. Why? They considered Chinese pagans. They looked down on them. Look down on their culture, look down on their language. You shouldn't be learning to speak the Chinese language. It's demonic, you know. And they condemn all Chinese emperors to burn in hell. And they demanded all converts to give up the rights of honoring their ancestors. Now you gotta understand Chinese culture. For 4,500 years, 4,500年来, China or Chinese people worship Shangdi, but they always honor their elders. It's in the culture. 
中国人虽然敬拜上帝，但他们懂得慎终追远，纪念祖先是文化里面的。Most people don't have ancestral worship. 大部分的人不是去拜他们的祖先 ，but they honor the dead. 而是尊荣纪念死者。康熙 make it very clear. 康熙讲得很清楚。He and most Chinese believe in a supreme sovereign Most High God. 他跟大部分中国人都相信同一位独一的真神。The rites of honoring ancestors were only signs of respect. 这些纪念祖先的仪式不过是表示尊敬而已。They don't pray to them. 他不向他们祷告。They are not afraid of departed spirits. 也不害怕那些死人的灵魂。And they have no superstitious beliefs concerning spirits. 在这些邪灵的事上面，他们不是这么迷信的人。But the Pope cannot accept it. 可是教皇当时不接受。Now this became known in history as a rite. Controversy. 在历史上，这被称为中国礼仪之争。Pope Clement the Eleventh sent zealous missionaries to Kangxi. 而当时的教皇克雷芒十一世就差了非常狂热的宣教士到康熙面前 ，demanding all China must renounce the honoring of their ancestors. 要求全中国要放弃纪念祖先的事。Now the missionaries he sent were overzealous. 差过去的宣教士过度狂热了 ，hyper religious， 超级狂热的人 ，totally insensitive to the feelings of the Chinese， 宗教化完全不感受中国人的感觉。They end up insulting the Chinese, their culture, and even their fellow Jesuit missionaries。到最后是侮辱中国人他们的文化，甚至他们那些耶稣会的修士。One of them was a French bishop who went to the emperor, insulted him, and challenged him. 而其中一个是法国的一个主教去侮辱康熙，同时挑衅他。后、oh, 康熙皇帝 was so stumbled。康熙皇帝受到非常大的屈辱。With that, he banned Christianity in China。因此，他禁止基督教在进入中国。And listen to what he said。听听他怎么说的。I have concluded that the Westerners are petty indeed。我这样看见，外国人真的是太小心眼了。It is impossible to reason with them because they do not understand larger issues as we understand them in China。没有办法跟他们解释中国人所明白的大是大非。There is not a single Westerner verse in Chinese works, and their remarks are often incredible and ridiculous. 西洋人根本不了解中国的文字，也没有办法说明他们所讲的实在是太荒谬了。To judge from this proclamation, 从他们带来的条约看来 ，So this was the demand of the Pope. 这是教皇带过来的条约。All right, their religion is no different from other small bigoted sects of Buddhism or Taoism. I have never seen a document which contains so much nonsense. 没看过什么文件上有这么多胡言乱语的。From now on, Westerners should not be allowed to preach in China to avoid further trouble. 以后西洋人不可再在中国传教，免得多生事端。With that, evangelism stopped. 到这里，整个宣教就结束了。How silly is that? God opened up the whole nation. 神打开整个国家耶。And some religious people came in. And insulted, and because they were intolerant, 就因为这些宗教化的人是不能够接纳，开始侮辱这些人。Kangxi, because he was so influenced by the missionaries, and he loved the missionaries, the Jesuit missionaries. Kangxi 非常爱这些耶稣会的宣教士，也跟他们有很好的感情。Secretly, he tried to negotiate a solution with the Pope. 私底下他还是希望跟教皇能达成协议。I don't believe in ancestral worship, he said. 他说我们不是在做偶祀祖先的敬拜。We don't pray to idols. 我们不对偶像祷告。We don't pray to the dead. 也不向死人祷告。But we do want to honor our ancestors. 可是我们要纪念尊敬我们的祖先。He was trying to convince the Pope. That all these rites were civil and not religious. He wants to convince the Pope that these are our culture and are not religious. The Pope refused to relent. But the Pope refused to relent. The Emperor Kangxi was so saddened, and this was what he commanded. Kangxi was so saddened, and this was what he commanded. Kangxi was so saddened, and this was what he commanded. Kangxi was so saddened, and this was what he commanded. Kangxi was so saddened, and this was what he commanded. Kangxi was so saddened, and this was what he commanded. Kangxi was so saddened, and this was what he commanded. Kangxi was so saddened, and this was what he commanded. Kangxi was so saddened, and this was what he commanded. For he leads men to good deeds. Because he is to lead men to good deeds. I have often heard from you, Westerners, that the devil leads men astray. This must be it. I have often heard from you, Westerners, that the devil leads men astray. This must be it. I have often heard from you, Westerners, that the devil leads men astray. This must be it. I have often heard from you, Westerners, that the devil leads men astray. This must be it. They are the greatest enemy of the cross. They are the greatest enemy of the cross. By their narrow-mindedness, intolerance, 不肯接纳 
are willing to accept people who are different from them. For them, they only have one narrow way, my way or no way, and their way is not even biblical. With that, the work of God was hampered for the next few hundred years. How sad it is. God giving China a Kairos moment. And it's the people within the church that came against it because they believe in isolation. You have learned the working of God among the Chinese these two weeks. You have seen how God is working behind the scene among the Chinese people from its very beginning 4,500 years ago. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not right for Chinese to become Christians. Let me tell you the converse is true. It's only natural for Chinese to become Christians. Because this is the first and only faith we always have known from the very beginning. Come on, give the Lord a big clap. Oh, give the Lord a big hand. Don't let anyone tell you your parents cannot be saved. Don't let anybody tell you your grandparents cannot be saved. Don't let anybody tell you the Chinese people should not become uh, Christians. That is a lie from the pit of hell. You have seen how by engaging culture, you can change a whole nation. Yet, you have also seen the greatest enemy of the cross is not Satan the devil. Very often I hear this everywhere I go. Oh, you know, oh, we got to come against the territorial spirits. Oh, we, there's territorial spirits that are stopping revival. I like what one pastor say. The territorial spirits are not demons. Territorial spirits very often are the religious Christians. The religious pastors. You know, you got to get out of that mindset. All right? You, instead of cultural isolation, we preach separation and we practice isolation. That's wrong. The Bible taught, teaches us insulation. We are insulated by the blood. By the word, by prayer, by the Holy Spirit. We get insulation for penetration in society. Oh, give the Lord a big hand. Help me preach this morning, right? Give the Lord praise. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches it is relationship. That precedes ministry. You can win an argument, but lose a relationship. All right, you are theologically very smart. All right, you know all the names of God. The Greek and the Hebrew. The five I wills of the devil. The seven proclamations in Revelation 2 and 3. You can win a theological debate, but lose. A relationship. And without relationship, there's no way you can influence anybody to Christ. You can't win someone over without first stepping into his world and enter into his culture. But anyhow, we see a good God loving the Chinese people. From its very beginning and all throughout history. Leading them very much the same way he led the Israelites in the Bible. Bring them to the place where they are open to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of their soul. So let's be confident. We in Asia, this is the last bastion of revival. We are going to see the greatest revival in our generation. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen, listen, listen. I'm so happy I live in Asia. 
Oh, though I preach all around the world, I come back here almost every week. Because I don't want to be anywhere else where the Spirit of God is working. God gave us the most number of people in Asia. And, and God put us in a place where people are ready to receive Jesus. So let's do everything we can. Engage culture. Don't become limited in our thinking. Don't become so religious. But be open hearted. Let's engage our world and lead the greatest revival of our generation in the history of the world. Musicians come out right now. Give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. How many of you, you want to believe God that your family can get saved? Put up your hands right now. How many of you have parents and grandparents that are yet to get saved? Put up your hands. I want to tell you, they can get saved. They can get saved. Because God is the God of Chinese people. Deep in our Chinese psyche, there's already an openness and a hunger for Shanti. Not for idols, but for the one real God, one true God. So let's believe God this year will be the year of breakthrough, the year of salvation. That this year our parents, our grandparents will get saved. Alright, and the only way we're going to see that happen. First, you got to begin in your thinking. You got to to visualize them getting saved. Believe they will get saved. And begin to speak out and pray that they will get saved. So let's quickly stand on our feet right now. Lift our holy hands and talk before the Lord right now. Let's pray for the salvation of our family members.